Carolyn Doobie here. Oh, what's the play for today? Well, today it's brought to you by shooting. I was shooting all over myself, saying things like, I should get the oil changed in the car. I should finish up that paperwork that is due soon. I should make that appointment to get the gray colored in my hair. No matter how many things I came up with, there were more of them. It was this never ending list of things that I should be doing. And that was really stressing me out way more than was useful. Because guess what? With all that shooting and all that worrying, was I actually getting anything done? Nope. I needed an antidote to this stress. And for that, I needed the play. I wanted a no should zone. There were no musts, no shoulds, no have tos, no rules. It just had to be play. Now, if you've ever felt stress, if you've ever wondered how to shake off the day, what I'm sharing with you in this video is how I do it, and you might find it helpful for you if you've ever felt any stress. I grab the lowest pressure surface that I know of to work on, which is cardboard, and I put a bunch of paints out on the palette. At this point, this doesn't have to be anything. Actually, at any point in today's play, this doesn't have to be anything at all. It can just be what it is. Just moving that color around just felt fantastic to me. The Sharpie marker that I'm bringing in here for this very fine, thoughtful, precision sketching that I'm doing, that is a really big Sharpie marker. And I did let the paint completely dry before I brought in the Sharpie marker, just because from experience, I know what will happen if I put Sharpie marker on wet paint, which is ruin the Sharpie. So just to recap for you, this method, this process for shaking off the day simply involves finding something to art on and something to art with. Doesn't matter what it is, whatever you've got is a great thing to use for this. Cardboard, paper, junk mail, trash, whatever it is, and some kind of art supply to make marks on it, to move color around. Paint, markers, ink, watercolors, pastels, chalk, whatever you've got will be great for a little stress-busting playtime. Should you happen to have a very bossy voice in your head like I do sometimes that's telling me what I should or should not be doing, feel free to tell that, to remind that voice this is a no should zone and to pipe down and be quiet because you're playing. Now what I'm using right there, that is called a fine liner and I've just filled it with black ink. Basically, it's a way for me to write all over wet paint and not worry about destroying a pen. I've got some rubber stamps here that were designed by Seth Apter, and I want to stamp them onto this cardboard. But I know from experience that if I use a regular ink pad, it'll just come out as very ghosty, and I wanted a really strong image with it. So I've got a little gel plate there, and I'm just using that kind of like an ink pad. I've brayered on just some black paint, and then putting the stamp in it. One of the perks of doing this on a gel plate is it gives you a nice thin layer of paint, but because it's on a gel plate, it also releases the paint really easily. And then when it's all done, I can actually take the paint that's left over on there and take a gel print somewhere so none of the paint ever gets wasted. For those of you who've never used paint with rubber stamps and you might have some concerns about how you're going to clean it up, there is a way to make cleanup really easy and get all of the paint off of the stamp. What I do is I fold over a couple of paper towels and put them in the bottom of a waterproof container and then I fill it up with enough water that the paper towels are juicy. So when I put the stamp on it, you can kind of see a little bit of water squishes out. This keeps water and moisture on the stamp, but you're not actually submerging the stamp completely. So after they soak on there for half an hour, an hour, when you pick them up, most of the paint is off of them. And if you've got a little left on there, then you just wipe a baby wipe over it or that kind of thing and all the paint comes right off. So remember how this is supposed to be a no should zone? Well, something is about to trigger that voice to tell me it should be something. I've got a stencil here, and this is one that I created for Stencil Girl products called Verbage. And I'm going to take the black paint that's on that gel plate there, it's acting as my palette, cosmetic sponge, and I'm going to stencil the word start here. Now, the word is actually started on the stencil, but I'm just going to do the part that says start and just ignore the ED. When I lifted up the stencil, the first thing I said in my head was, oh, it shouldn't look this way and I caught that. I knew that this was a no should zone. So instead of saying that it should be this or it shouldn't be that, instead I try to look at it as do I like it or do I not like it? And if I don't like it, I just call it an oops, an outstanding opportunity presenting suddenly. 
and that's exactly what happened here. I thought the black would really stand out and pop against it, and it just didn't. It needs to be a different color, say maybe white. So I put the stencil right back on top, and I took a baby wipe, and I wiped off most of the black paint. Why did I put the stencil back on it instead of just wiping the whole thing off? Well, that's because the paint that's there, most of the paint on this thing is still damp. So if I had just wiped off the black paint without putting the stencil on there, I probably would have wiped off some of the stuff I didn't want to lose. So that's why I brought in the baby wipe. Now that I've got most of the black paint off of there, now I came in with white paint and just put that right on top. When I lift this up, you'll see a shadow kind of around the letters, and you know how that came to be. Just an oops with that black paint. So if you ever happen to feel stress, like I do from time to time, give play a try. Grab something to art on and something to art with, and then just let yourself play. If you start hearing anything in your mind that says you should do this, or those critical kind of thoughts, perfectionism, whatever it is that's giving you stress, just tell it to quiet down. This is playtime and there aren't any rules here. If you'd like more help playing, if you want to know more strategies for how to get into the fun and enjoy, well, I highly encourage you to check out my free workshop called Permission to Play. It's all built around showing you specific strategies of how to let go and play and enjoy. I'll have a link down below for you to take you over to my website, acolorfuljourney.com, where you can get signed up and jump in and start playing. Well, thanks so much for joining me for a little stress reduction here today. If you've been enjoying this video, I'd so appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. And of course, if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. That way you'll know as soon as there's a new video out. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.